Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, may God's peace dwell with you now and always. Please join me in prayer. Lord Jesus, we give thanks to you that you have come and dwelt among us, that you have showed us the greatest act of love in the, your death and your resurrection. Help us each day to live out that love in our lives, that we might show others that true gift that you have shown to us in all things. May our lives be reflecting of that love each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Don't take it personally. Many of you probably have heard those words. Some of you have probably said those words. I think it's interesting that we say those words, don't take it personally. And usually, right after that, there's an insult to follow. Or maybe the insult will precede it at times. Don't take it personally. That color just is not your color. Don't take it personally. You don't have to make that for dinner again. Don't take it personally. That sermon was not the best sermon you've ever preached. Don't take it personally. You know, by the way, that hairstyle is not for you. And you think about it, and we hear these don't take it personallys, and how can we do anything but take it personally? How can we not ignore those words? Because really they do affect us on a personal level. It doesn't take long in our lives to experience offense or, or to cause offense either. We're people who take things personally. We're people who will at times be offended. We're people at times who will cause offense and hurt others. And I bring this up because this is exactly the thread that goes through our entire gospel for this morning. Now, as Jesus gave us this gospel from Matthew chapter 5, you probably noticed that there was a lot of law in the gospel. In fact, each of the things that he named, whether it be anger or lust or divorce or oaths, those are all things that could be preached on sermons on their own. And he puts it all together. But there's one common thread. And that is the relationship that we share with other people around us. With our brothers and sisters in Christ and even those who are outside of the church. And he, when he talks about this, he gets right to the heart of the matter. Our heart problem. See, a lot of times that's where it starts, isn't it? It starts with a problem of heart. We're talking about the way that we live around one another. And it starts with our sinful hearts. Now Jesus only alludes to it here in Matthew. But just listen to Mark chapter 7. And, and right early on, he talks about very specifically, these things coming right from our hearts. What comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. Now, see there, Jesus, he added a few more things to the list, didn't he? But all those things come back to that relationship with, that we have with one another. All those things come from where our heart position is. All these evils come from within our hearts, our sinfulness. And when we talk about that, maybe you heard some of those th things that sounded like the Ten Commandments. And when we think about it, the Ten Commandments are broken up into two parts. The first three commandments deal with our relationship with God. They talk about how we are to live with God, how we are to love God, how we are to hold no other above God. The second half of the commandments, or more than half, seven commandments, Deal with our relationship with one another. And when we talk about those commandments, Jesus has a nice way of summarizing. And maybe you're familiar with those verses from Matthew 22. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Truly, if we could keep the first of those two commandments, we wouldn't need a second commandment. We wouldn't need 10 commandments. We wouldn't need 613 separate commandments. But the problem is, is we cannot even keep that first commandment. Our broken relationships with one another stem from our broken relationship with God. Our broken relationship with God is because, well, let's be honest with ourselves. We're drawn to things beside God. We're drawn from things beside his word. The psalmist is very clear in our, those first eight verses that we read in Psalm 119. He was very clear to say that if we follow in the paths of the Lord, that we will be faithful. But so often it's easy to be drawn away from those paths, isn't it? It's easy to fall into those traps of the world of self-justification. It's easy to look at those things that Jesus lists in our gospel for this morning and find our lives more drawn to those than to him. Just think about it for a moment. Anger. It's a natural response to offense, to hurt, isn't it? We seem to lash out and we say things that are poisonous and hurtful. And then we follow up by justifying ourselves and saying, well, that person hurt me first, so I have a right to punish them. I have a right to get them back. We justify ourselves very quickly. 
Jesus talked about that, and that destroys our relationships. Jesus talked about lust, and think of how quickly lust will erode a relationship, a marriage. How easy it is for lust to, to get into our eyes and into our hearts. And we might point our finger at the internet, we might point our finger at magazines and television shows, but let's be honest with ourselves here again. Lust comes from our sinful hearts. And even if we didn't have the internet, and even if we didn't have television or magazines that showed programs that they shouldn't, we're still people who will break God's law. And we're still people who will allow lust to live. See, God has given us this beautiful recognition of, of his creation. Man and woman were created beautiful. But lust, it turns it from beauty to objectification, turning people into things, conquests for our own desires. And so often this lust, it leads to the next thing that Jesus talked about, and that's divorce. It seems like today, so often, divorce is the answer that people go to, isn't it? When marriage gets hard, well, divorce is there. When that person is not showing me the affection I deserve, well, divorce is an option. When they are not doing what I expect them to do, divorce must be an option. And this is not just outside the church, but it's in the church as well. I heard a story, uh, uh, rather, a report on the NPR the other day, and then I looked it up, and there was a, uh, a year ago, there was a study done, and it was about the fact that in the Bible Belt, the area of the country that's known for being religious and faithful to God, has the highest rate of divorce. It's not a problem outside the church. It's a problem among us as well. It's a problem among our broken relationships as well. And we may say, well, oaths, at least we can get out of that one. Except how often do we look at contracts? And how, how, how many times have we heard about people who will sign their name to a contract and then they'll back out of it when they don't feel like they're getting their way, when they don't feel like they're getting what they are owed or deserved? It used to be that you could shake hands 50 years ago and it meant something because we trusted one another, but truly that trust is gone now. You can't even sign a paper and trust that that signature means anything. And I share these things because these are all things that Jesus shared that break our relationships, that break our relationships with one another, but they also are destructive for our relationship with him because they are interconnected. God takes these things very personally. He takes these things very personally because they have to do with how we live with him, how we view him, and how we live with one another. And think about the way that our own broken relationships affect our love for God. Because when our relationships are broken with one another, it's hard to love as God loves us. It's hard to forgive as God has forgiven us. It's hard to look at others and, well, even care for them as we should. And he takes us, God takes us so personally that he says, even when you're in the house, in my house, if you remember that there's something that you have between a brother or sister, first go reconcile that. Because he knows how destructive it is even to our worship. How destructive it is to our love for him. Now notice he didn't say stop coming to church if someone offended you at church. He didn't say that you should stop coming to church if you are having a fight with your spouse. But he did say take care of those things. Look at that relationship that you, which, that you have. And just for a moment think about your own lives. When things are going on in your life, when things are bubbling over in your heart and you're fighting with your family members or you're struggling with a friend how to deal with a problem, how easy is it to worship God? When you're sitting there, you're, instead your mind is on that friend, on that family member, isn't it? Instead of focusing on him. Now despite that, God, he still accepts our worship. He still gives us that forgiveness. But he wants us to fix those broken relationships in our life. He wants us to fix those broken relationships because he has given us family, he's given us friends, and he's given us those relationships as a gift. He's given those as a blessing for our lives. People are not meant to be viewed as someone who is just another person, but as part of our lives. And from the beginning of time, he's watched as relationships have been broken. He's watched as anger and pain and hate have driven divisions and gulfs between loved ones. And he watches as it happens in your own families. He watches as your loved ones, as you grow apart from them, as the longer you hold on to those grudges and those divisive issues, how much further you get away, how greater that gulf grows. And he responds. He responds not 
to continue the cycle of anger. He responds not continuing the cycle of hate or pain. He responds with love. He responds with the same love that he showed us as he sent his son Jesus to be our Savior on the cross. He responds with that same love each and every day in our lives. He responds with that love that was love enough to conquer death. True love. Self-sacrificial love. Not empty storybook love that you see in the movies or maybe that you saw on a Valentine's Day card. But true love is that self-sacrifice that he showed to each and every one of us when he gave his life, his body and blood on the cross for us. That true love that he poured out for you while you were still a sinner while you still have broken relationships. He did everything. He gave everything to repair that relationship between you and him. Because that is how great God's love is for each one of us. Is that each and every day he is willing to continue to seek after us, continuing to pursue us, continue like a lover pursuing his mate or her mate. He seeks after us, again calling us back to him, drawing us back to him. And he desires that we share that same love. That we show that love to our loved ones too because they need it. Not because he needs it, but because we need it. And so often we, we say, well, it's not easy. We say that people have done things to hurt us. We, we say that they don't deserve our love. They've done things that we, you can't even imagine. And God said, no, I paid for that on the cross too. And we make excuses. And then we're drawn back to those words. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. You notice it's not exactly what the golden rule says, is it? Do unto others as they've done unto you. But instead it starts out with that love that God has shown us that we reflect to others. It starts out with that love that we reflect to those in our lives. And it is self-sacrificial love. It is love that sometimes is not easy to show. Because sometimes when you're trying to show that love, it's going to be scorned and people are going to turn their back on it and people are still going to offend you and they're going to say things like, don't take it personally. Sometimes there's going to be uh, times when your kids do things that anger you and upset you and don't behave as you expect them to. And kids, there, sometimes your parents are not going to listen to you. They're not going to, even if you're right and make a good point. Sometimes your friends are going to forget your birthday. Sometimes your pastor's going to forget your name once in a while. Sometimes things are going to happen in your relationships that hurt. But God says, respond as I've responded with love. Respond as I've responded with true love. And that is that self-sacrificial love. That giving of our time, of our energy. That giving of ourselves for others. That reminder of what he's done for us. But it's truly that is why we reflect that love. Why we share that love. Why our relationships with others are important. It's because it shows us just a small picture of that relationship we have with our God. That promise of that, that what, just what that forgiveness means. What that love that he shows us means. And so God takes our relationships personally. He takes your relationship with him personally. And he wants you to show that love personally to one another. The greatest way to show that love is by sharing your faith. By sharing that love that he's shown us on the cross. By sharing with others that promise of salvation. That they too might know the promise of forgiveness. The promise of eternal life. May God fill you richly with his love this day and every day. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, we give thanks to you for the relationships you've given us. For the relationships in this life that even though they are broken, they're part of the life we live as your children. We pray, Lord, that you would forgive us for those times when we put ourselves first, when our selfishness takes the place. Forgive us for those times when we cause offense, when we cause pain, when we cause hurt to others. Reassure us that you have shown us true forgiveness and true love that even in those things you forgive our sins, that you cleanse us and you make us new each morning, that we might again reflect that love anew. Lord, help us in those times when when our relationships are broken to seek forgiveness, to seek your grace. Lord, there are those in our congregation even now who have broken relationships and broken hurts, those who have not spoken to family members maybe in weeks, months, even years. Lord, we pray 
that you would be with them in their heart, that you'd send your Holy Spirit, not only to them, but to the, the family member, the friend that's been hurt, that they might be, come, return to, to a loving relationship, uh, that they might again return to a relationship that honors you. Lord, we thank you that even in all things, that you have shown us the greatest gift of love by your self-sacrifice on the cross. May we live as those children forgiven each day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.